Greetings, my name is Thomas Philippine from the Quantum Buddhism Association and I'm going to discuss with you the our latest experiment on plants. We did an experiment um, using our, our knowledge and wisdom that we've built uh, for the last two years on how to influence the process of nature like a lot of people are doing. And uh, first objection is, uh, you want to play with nature, you're playing God. We're not. People are already using fertilizers and chemicals to pollute the earth to try to plant, make plants grow bigger and faster. So what we want to do is do the same level of influence or even better to have much more productivity without using any fertilizer or chemical influence or any other type of physical influence whatsoever to have plants grow at a much faster rate. Um, we're going to show you an image uh, now. You can see on your left there's an experimental group A uh, which did not grow at all. Okay? There's a control group in the middle and uh, the plant that was the closest to the experimental group A uh, was caught up in the uh, quantum influence field that we made so it also did not grow. So we only have two plants of the control group that grew and then we reorganized the, 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 the plant order to give more space between the, 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 the various uh, quantum influence fields. And you can see on control group, um, on experimental group B, that the plants are much higher. Uh, there was an experiment uh, done by William Tiller where people sat for one hour around uh, a bottle or container of water and it ch they change only with their mind the pH of water from 6 to 7 only with, by thinking about it by experienced meditators. Um, we want to find out the ways to influence nature in the most efficient, most drastic way and control um, group was not influenced at all and experimental group B was influenced for only one minute by two people and this influence created a 216% in plant growth increase and um, after a while we simply removed the quantum influence from the plants and you can see on this, this second slide that the experimental group B grew a bit less higher than the control group uh, and it gained adulthood at about the same time because we removed the, uh, the quantum influence the, the influence, which is, I'll speak to you of, of the quantum influence later on. It is the, the modulation of the quantum field at, at this place, at this space-time definition where the plants are. Um, and it touches both the plant and the ground and the soil around it. So, the plants of group B grew with a slightly thicker tem, stem, uh, a bit more green, a bit more fulfilled, uh, the leaves are just a tiny bit bigger and the plant as a whole is a bit smaller. So uh, there are tons of reasons why it could have done that. Uh, the first thing is that we did accelerate the metabolism so it did grow with more power at first and then it simply invested more in its expansion instead of its growth at in, in terms of height. So you can see like something like 9% less height in the um, experimental, experimental group B con uh, compared to the control group. So the reason, the, the reason why we do this kind of research is, um, is to be able to put this quantum field influence into a machine, what William Tiller already uh, described as an IIED, Intention Imprinted Imiting Device, and to transport it to some other place like a field, a one square mile field, and have four of these devices create a square around it to modulate this influence over a long period of time so that we could hopefully, not confirmed yet, not done yet, but hopefully if everything goes right and everything has been going right on, up to now in our research, we will be able to double or triple the production of a field without any pollutant chemical interaction at all. So this is this could be a breakthrough eventually. We think that we have about maybe one year, two years uh, of research to do now to, to um, eliminate all the doubts and go through the institutional uh, administrative things where people want to be certain that there are no side effects. We did not see a single side effect yet. 
and if there would be, they probably would be less than the use of chemicals, but right now we don't see any single side effect, negative effect, on, on the nature of the soil, on the nature of the plants. Uh, the plants are seem to be as nutritious, but we, we need some... Now we're at this point in our research, our, our new experiment is going to go on a five control group over 60 plants and, and, and much more wires and cameras and, and, and data picked up because up to now our, all our pilot experiments have been uh, done with not sufficient control. Our goal was to provide sufficient proof with no financial means or almost no financial means prove that we have something and now we know we have something we've been doing it um, a few times now uh, in different areas and on different things plants and other things anyway we, we just want to to inform the public that we're doing something right now and so you can see that we'll get back to this the, 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 the first photography where the first group we wanted to prove that the, what goes on in the mind, in the head, is not what influences nature, but what goes on in pure thought, incarnated in the self, uh, of, uh, of, and incarnated into the visceral experience of life. Okay. This is complicated a bit, but we're going to get to it. Okay. So, on, on experimental group A, we use the mantra, or a thought, that is, Earth provides life. In Sanskrit, it was Om Bum Bhava Jiva. Earth provides life. But we stayed in a state of elevated transcendental consciousness. And you can see that experimental group A did not raise. So it has nothing to do with the mantra that you use, but the state of pure thought you put yourself into. Okay? We were in a state of blissful happiness and the plants did not grow. They did not incarnate. On control group, we did nothing. On experimental group B, we use a mantra uh, and a thought in our heads which basically means slumbering into the death of non-existence. Okay, so it was supposed to be destructive, but we put ourselves in a state of mind of powerful incarnation into dense matter st while still connected to the high transcendental state. So you have to expand your range of consciousness a lot to be in the state of consciousness and still be very conscious incarnated into your visceral experience and push this thought in the plant, in the field, in the area where the, the, the plants of control of experimental group B are growing and it did boom and we did this influence for only one minute, two people and the plant started to grow like crazy and then we removed the plant meaning that we installed being a, con a quantum programmer, someone who can go there in pure thought and bring it back here in reality from the quantum space into the collapsed manifested space and push it in something and define an area and then we removed this influence after a week and the, the experimental group B started to simply come back to its state of adulthood grew to just a bit shorter but a big I mean about the same mass I guess uh, less height, more power, more uh, intensity in the leaves and the, the, the color and the, the texture of the plants. So, this is the kind of stuff that we do right now. We'll be able to produce all the research quickly, efficiently, and within one year, produce a solution to have these plants grow very fast for almost anyone to just learn how to do this quantum programming stuff put it in the machine, plant the machine in the field, and boom, plants grow without fertilizer. So if you want to help us, go there. I thank you for your attention. Bless you.